When a 24-year-old Michael Jordan took the court against his arch rivals, the Bad Boy Pistons, to end the 1988 season, he was very angry. Angry at the fact that people were telling him he'd never win a title, yes. Angry at the Pistons, sure. Who wouldn't be mad at guys that did this to you? But most importantly, something had been bothering Mike all season. He had been cheated. And we're not talking about in a game, no. We're talking about training camp. Jordan walks out after Collins clash, quickly made headlines as after Doug Collins, the Chicago Bulls head coach purposely rigged the score against Michael Jordan in an early training camp scrimmage. Mike flipped out to the point that he left practice in a fury. Coach Collins, a man Michael Jordan has the utmost respect for, had crossed the line to Mike and had cheated him. And so Mike tried to deal with it. The Bulls find him and Mike tried to move on. The thing is, though, that is not how Michael Jordan's brain works. He is still mad somewhere that that score was wrong. He still hates that Doug Collins cheated him. To him, Doug had crossed the line and he had gotten fed up. But Doug was a friend. So when Michael Jordan finally got fed up with the Detroit Pistons, when they finally crossed the line to him, enough was enough too. On this April 3rd night, Michael Jordan not only scored 59 points against a defense that is considered a legendary, but also watch these final moments against Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas. Thomas goes for three. Lane Bear keeps it alive. Thomas knocked away by Jordan from behind. Lane Bear setting a screen. Now they double Thomas. And the ball knocked away into the hands of Jordan. Five seconds to go. And a foul. 58 points for Michael Jordan. Not only did Mike pull this out, not only did he show the greatness that was to come, but also look at the bottom right of your screen. This was a regular season game, but look at how much it meant for Michael Jordan to pull out this win. That is who Michael Jordan was at 24. That is who he still is. An insane competitor who, if you cross him, you're gonna regret it. But. What happens if you do? Well, what's up guys, Mike here, and today we are talking about the ultimate time when a city, yes, I said city, tried to mess with and take down Michael Jordan. And you may be thinking I'm talking about a poison pizza and food poisoning. That happened in game five of the same 1997 NBA Finals that was documented in The Last Dance. I made a short about it recently. The flu game and its story are definitely a very famous part of NBA conspiracy history. But what if I were to tell you that swept under the rug is just as crazy of a conspiracy and that it happened happened just three days earlier in those same 1997 NBA Finals. It is here where I need to introduce you to Gatorade, or should I say Gator Load, a drink that sounds pretty horrible if I'm being honest. Consumers seem to agree as it was quickly taken off of the shelves, perhaps due to no one buying it, but also perhaps due to the fact that this drink may have been used by Utah Jazz fans to cheat. It is famously known in NBA circles that Utah Jazz fans can get a bit crazy. There's a reason why a poisoned pizza conspiracy theory is not laughed out of the room, but is instead talked about seriously in one of the most famous sports documentaries of all time. And so guys, before we continue, I am very, very excited to say that this video is sponsored by NBA Top Shot. And I will say I am very excited because I'm excited to talk to you about the collection I've been building. Now, NBA Top Shot is the officially licensed NFT of the NBA. NBA Top Shot going forward is going to be an integral part of being an NBA fan. And let me show you why. Here are my moments right now. We are actually going to build a starting five with a sixth man. What better point guard to start with? My legendary Derrick Rose, number nine of 36. And the reason why I love this card is that this is the only Derrick Rose Bulls moment on top shot currently. Then a shooting guard, though, we have one of my current favorite players, Clay Thompson, because I'm also so excited to have a number one serial. In this moment, it is so cool. Clay is talking about passing Kobe Bryant, his challenge childhood idol on the three-point list, and he talks about how he wants to get to second, how he wants to be right behind Steph. For small forward, here we have Kawhi Leonard, and he spins past Kevin Durant. Russell Westbrook reaches, and then he dunks on Serge Ibaka. So in this clip, we have Hall of Famer Kawhi, Hall of Famer KD, Hall of Famer Russ, Defensive Player of the Year Serge Ibaka, and also, if you notice this badge, Kawhi would beat the Thunder and go on to be the NBA Finals MVP this season. These are the moments 
I love and something that personally will always last forever in my mind is a life moment when Giannis dapped me up and said he loved my YouTube videos. So I had to do it, of course. I got this play from another championship season. This is the game that he finished off the Phoenix Suns. And here we have my favorite center moment. Now, as you can see, here is Shaq the Diesel going all the way to the basket for the score. Not only is this a championship season, but if we see this, this is Shaq's top shot debut. And to finish this off, we have our sixth man. And I have to say, I kind of went all in on the boy, Jalen Green here. This is Jalen Green's rookie card on Top Shot. So that's my group, guys. If you sign up for Top Shot today, the best way to start is with a starter pack. You can pull a moment of a superstar like LeBron or Steph or a rookie like Kate or Evan Mobley. That will cost you just $9. And then if you don't get the moment you like, you can head on over to the marketplace where you could search for your favorite moments. So guys, that means go click the link in my description to sign up for NBA Top Shot now. If you use my link to sign up and purchase a $9 starter pack, Top Shot will give you $20 back so that you can start building your own starting five in the marketplace. So make sure to sign up. Make sure to go click that link in the description. Thank you again to Top Shot. And for now, back to the video. Jazz fans definitely support their teams. I will say that. If you've ever seen the movie Celtic Pride, I'm not saying two Jazz fans would have kidnapped Michael Jordan if given the chance during the 1997 finals. I'm definitely not saying that. But there is a chance we may have been talking about the disappearance game if Jazz fans were given the chance. I'm just saying. We already know the flu game conspiracy exists. But now let's take a look at how the Bulls players are acting in just one game before in game four of the 1997 NBA Finals. As you can see, yes, Michael Jordan is in discomfort, but also so are several of the Chicago Bulls players. Because you see, just like LeBron James, Michael Jordan actually had a little bit of a cramping problem in his career. When he returned to the game in 1995 after his first retirement, Mike was cramping before the end of the first quarter and was in clear physical pain. After this game, when asked if he was disappointed because he didn't get the chance to dunk, Mike responded with, I was cramping so bad, I didn't really want to. Which means now, we're back to Gator Load. Did you forget about it like America did? Well, Gator Load at this point in time was a drink that Gatorade introduced to the market right around the time of this NBA Finals. This drink was loaded with carbs and was intended to be a recovery-based drink. Definitely not a drink you consume during a basketball game, especially if you're playing and you're Michael Jordan. Which is why when we combine the insane antics of the Utah Jazz fans that we know exist with this horrible drink called Gator Load, we get an all-time mystery. According to Chicago Bulls head athletic trainer Chip Schaefer, during game four of the NBA Finals, the reason why all of the Bulls are cramping, the reason why they are in discomfort, is that instead of drinking Gatorade, the drink that replenishes a player's electrolytes and fights against dehydration and cramping, the entire Bulls team drank Gator Load for the whole game. Chip Schaefer would say that instead of feeling replenished, quote, it was like eating baked potatoes, which I think we can all agree is a food that we've never seen a player ask for in a timeout. And the thing is, this mistake was attributed to an unnamed Bulls assistant. I looked it up. I bought the books. I looked for this unnamed assistant's name. Trust me, guys, I dug. It is not out there. Was it Chip and he's deflecting blame? Possibly, but I believe in Chip. I just want to know, why is this not talked about more? This has to be one of the most suspicious things I have ever heard that has been brought up so casually. Again, let's look at the Chicago Bulls during this game. And now let's jump back into this game. As with Mike Stunk, Chicago did take a five point lead and was about to take a three to one series advantage. With Scotty on the bench, John Stockton would take advantage with a huge three. Mike was still Mike with the answer on the other end, but Stockton again takes advantage with a steal and then he gets fouled by Mike. Watch this clip. Mike's head gets to the net. Stockton would continue to be an absolute animal out there. And the Bulls would end up losing this game before barely hanging on in a game five victory with a two point win. As in that flu game, Michael Jordan yet again showed how great he was as he and his trainer have both claimed that instead of it being the flu, he had food poisoning from a bad pizza. A bad pizza that if we believe Mike proves yet again that Utah Jazz fans are very, very loyal to their team. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was very excited to jump into a new conspiracy here. If you have been enjoying the videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a new video. And we're on the road to 2 million subscribers, guys. Thank you so much. And a double thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, guys, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an
an awesome day.